Hey folks, and welcome to the Morse Summer 2022 Adventures Day 22. And what a day it has been. We left uh, Gillette this morning, drove uh, along 90 West, uh, seen some beautiful country, and seen some wide open country. Um, the closer we got to the mountains, the uh, happier Chrissy and I were, but then we're mountain people, okay? Having said all that, you know, uh, if I'd known, well, I jokingly say that we come to, to Billings for the t-shirt, because those of you that don't know, Billings, Montana, KOA was the first. It is the original KOA worldwide, all right? built in 1962 is when they opened it having said that this is our second time in two years that, or three years that we have been here and they have been sold well this year they didn't have any the first time they were sold out those that know me know i like t-shirts they were sold out two years ago of the t-shirt that says the original koa this year they didn't even have any not even any coffee mugs or keychains or anything else they didn't order them so we're all, we're all for two. And I jokingly say that's why I come to Billings. But really, one of the reasons why we came this way was, yes, the t-shirt. But two years ago when we came through, it was COVID. And we didn't realize that we were as close as what we were to Little Bighorn. And we stopped there. Of course, it was the, the visitor center and, and the ranger station, all that was closed because of COVID. But the battlefield was open and you could walk around it and whatnot we came back this year we didn't walk the battlefield this time because we had done it before but we did take a a tour um uh, that was a narrated you know tour uh from the crow from individuals from the crow nation which is where little bighorn is is on their reservation or next to it and we took the whole battlefield which Christian and I didn't know how extensive it was. We thought Little Bighorn was just that mound that we went to and visited two years ago. Oh, this was an hour-long tour. It took us clear to the end where, Rome, where Reno and Sitting Bull and Gall and all them. And a lot of folks, folks, Sitting Bull was not a war chief. He was the shaman. But Gall was the war chief for that village. And how many... Native Americans between the Sioux and the Northern Cheyenne, the Crow, the, uh, I don't remember the other tribes. There was five tribes involved anyway. Uh, how many people were really there uh, at Little Bighorn and how the U.S. Cavalry underestimated the size? All right. It was just, just totally impressive. It was just totally impressive. I'm glad we came back, and I'm glad we took the tour. Because, like I said, now we have a better understanding. You know, before, I, I, I knew that Reno was here, and that Benton was over here, and Kenny was over here, and Custer was over here. But how, actually, there's three, three different columns coming in together. But how did they actually mesh together until... Our guide to, you know, today showed us and, and told us about it and pointed out different landmarks and where these people were, where the cavalry were, where this village was. Totally impressive. And so I encourage you, if anyone comes to this area and goes to Little Bighorn, to go ahead and make time for that hour tour. Uh, we had to wait about 15 minutes before the bus come because they only got the one bus. And it's uh, like a 15-passenger conditioned uh, bus van. Make time for it. That's 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 all I can say. It's you know encourage you to make time for it. And then again, uh, the museum and everything at the ranger station, the visitor center, this is is good too. I, don't get me wrong, that was good, but it, you know, and hearing it from you know a, a Native American indigenous to that area. I mean, he was born and raised right there on the reservation. Um, that is also, Little Bighorn is also the site of a National Veterans Cemetery. Uh, they quit, I think it was in September of 
92 taking reservations. The cemetery is basically full. It's a, it's a national cemetery just like Arlington or any other veteran cemetery. There are some slots open, but people have already reserved, paid, or, or put in for, registered for those slots. Um, there are two individuals from the Battle of Bighorn buried there. One was Lieutenant uh, Calhoun, I believe his name was, and the other one was uh, uh, Farrier was a farrier, which is a horseshoer. They were outside when they collected all the bodies. They missed those two until later. So those are the two individuals that are mem that were members of the battle that are buried in the National Cemetery. Our guide, he has two grandfathers buried there. One both of them are World War II vets. One of them is also a Korean War vet. So both his grandfathers are buried there. His great-great-grandfather uh, was a scout for the cavalry. Uh, the Crow were allies with the cavalry, if you will. Uh, but the, the rest of the individuals that were fallen, the 200 and something are fall, that were that, that that fell at Little Bighorn, at Little Bighorn, are buried in a mass grave, and then there's a monument on top of it. And because they are buried in a mass grave and the monument, that's where they will lay forever. They can't go in and do DNA and, and identify the different people because they were just all buried. So now all the bones are just all mixed together. The other individual that and some of them were buried where they laid, all right, where they, where they fell. Later on, they came in and buried them all in the mass grave, except one, and that was Custer. And, of course, he's buried, uh, I think, back in Arlington. If not in Arlington, then in, in Minnesota, uh, or Michigan, Minnesota, I don't know, Michigan, Michigan, where he's from. Anyway, uh, he's, he's also the one that was buried here, but then... Or he fell, but then they entombed him and or exhumed him and, and took him to wherever. So those three individuals from the Bighorn that died here, two in the National Cemetery here and Custer back wherever, the rest of the people that fell at Little Bighorn are all buried under the, the mass grave underneath the monument. Uh, but still, impressive. Uh, it, it, it made things more understandable now that I had the whole tour, and, and the battlefield uh, is about three miles long, if not longer. So, and I don't know how much how wider, but I mean, it's not just the little knoll that Custer stood, you know, and they call it the last ten hill, but that's not the little bighorn battleground, if you follow what I'm saying. So, and then uh, we came on into Billings, uh, and, and, you know, got set up and everything. Um, had a few issues, but, you know, that's in God's hands. And um, we're still on the road. Hopefully the slide will come in uh, when we get ready to leave tomorrow. But, uh, you know, I got something better. Okay? Always better. Today's scripture, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. We are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Excuse me. Another version. Ooh. It's because of the Lord's mercy and loving kindness that we are not consumed, because his tender compassions fail not. Malachi 3.6 they are new every morning. Great and abundant is your stability and faithfulness. And that refers to Isaiah 33 too. See, see here, so the writer for Lamentations is referring back to other prophets of the Old Testament and saying, look, it was the same then. It's the same now. You know, his blessings are new every morning. You know, and that's what I'm so great. You know, it's one of the first things, even though I may not, you know, when, when, 
I might not even be out of bed. You know, Chris will come in and wake me up. And even just mentally, if I don't say it verbally, just thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for waking me up. You know? Because every day, every day, there's new blessings in store for us. That's great. That's great. You know? Steadfast the love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. For they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. A lot of times we, as individuals, get wrapped up in a lot of things and think that, and I myself, hey, I'm not pointing fingers, all right? I'm, you know, they're all back me. A lot of, the folks, a lot of times that I'm, I'm talking to you, I'm talking about myself too. So don't think that I'm all greater than that, all right? Because the oh, Lord knows I'm not, all right? But so many times we stumble and fall and we think, oh, I've blown it, you know. Though the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because he loves us so much, and we're covered by God's, or by Christ's blood, you know, we've got it. Yeah, we'll stumble and fall. And as a good father that God is, he's going to reach down and say, come on, son, come on, daughter, and pick you back up. Dust your bitches off. Brush your knees off and let's go again. Okay. Because through the blood of Christ, we're His. And He loves us. And that's what makes it so great. You know. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Folks, I can just say that if you do not have a relationship with God like this then I encourage you to please just pray Heavenly Father I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ forgive me of my sins cover me with Christ's blood he was the sacrifice for my sins forgive me of my sins help me and guide me send the Holy Spirit as your word says to comfort and guide and direct so that I may be a follower and worthy of the gift of your son in his life forgive me for my sins I pray in Jesus name help me and guide me Holy Spirit amen it's all it takes folks something simple as that so y'all be blessed we'll see you again tomorrow night uh, at a place a little further west and a little further south Okay, we've changed our reservations a little bit, so, you know, it is going to be what it is. All right. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.